This lesson is on how to derive composite functions. We've worked with the product of functions, the quotient of functions, power functions, sum and different functions, and trig functions. Now we're going to work when you composite or compose two functions, put two types of functions together. This is the last type of function or type of technique in order to derive what we're going to learn in this unit. And then we're going to get to some applications of derivatives. The rule used to derive composite functions is called the chain rule. First, it's important to understand what a composite function is. All right? It's one function inside another function. And it really helps to think of this as two separate functions, one inside the other. You want to think of your big outside function, your main function, and then your little function that's inside it. Let's take a look up here. We have f of x, this black function, the outside function, our main function. That's our, what we're starting with, what we're going to, our main overall controlling function. But inside of f of x, there's a, small, a different function, g of x, that's inside that function. It's been composed into that function. So I've got three examples here. x cubed minus 2x plus 1 to the fifth. Before, we could have derived x cubed minus 2x plus 1 without a problem. Now that we throw that inside of another function to the fifth power, now we have to learn a different, move, or a different method. We can see that our outside function, our main function here, is something to the fifth power. We're raising something to the fifth power. Our inside function is what's being raised to that power, so it's x cubed minus 2x plus 1. So we have our outside function here and our inside function here. Something to the fifth is our main f of x. This polynomial function inside is our g of x, our inside function. Next we have a trig example. Cosine of 3x squared. Our main function, our f of x, our outside function, is cosine of something. Cosine of something. We know how to derive that. Our inside function is what we're taking the cosine of, 3x squared. Our inside function and all trig functions will be the angle. This angle in this case is 3x squared. Outside function is cosine, inside function is that angle, 3x squared. Finally, we have cube root of the tan of x. Well, our, in, I'm sorry, our outside function, our main function, is a cube root function. Our inside function is going to be the tan of x, what we're taking the cube root of. Big outside function, little inside function. Just like the product rule, you didn't take the, uh, the derivative of the first and multiply it by the derivative of the second. The quotient rule, you didn't take the derivative of the top and, or, and divide it by the derivative of the bottom. The chain rule, you're not going to take the derivative of the outside or the derivative of the inside on the, ins on, on the inside either. You've got to realize you have this big outside function. Let's say you have like an x squared function, your outside function. Well, that function's rate of change is constantly 2x, 2 times the x value everywhere. But when you compose something else inside of that, it's going to change the rate. It's going to affect the rate of the overall function. So the outside function is changing at a specific rate. But then whatever you stick inside of it is also changing at its own rate. In order to find the overall rate, the overall derivative of the composite function, you're going to take the derivative of the outside function, leaving the inside function the same. So the derivative of the outside function, leaving the inside function the same, and multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. So you're going to derive the outside function like you normally would with all the rules that you've learned, then at the end, when you're done deriving that one, at the very end, you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And here you see the notation for that. f of g of x is our original function, with f of x being our outside function, our big function in black, g of x being the inside function. f prime, I'm sorry, the derivative of this is f prime of the inside function, leaving the inside function the same, leaving the inside function the same, so you take the derivative of that, that outside function, leaving the inside function in there the same way, and at the end, you multiply by the derivative of the inside function, whatever's in there. Here's a few examples. Actually, the three examples that we saw earlier is our examples of composite functions. We're going to derive those now. So we have y equals x cubed minus 2x plus 1 to the fifth. Well, our outside function is something to the fifth power. So we're going to derive that like we would anything to the fifth power. We're going to bring the 5 out front. 
multiply by this function to the fourth power. Five times this to the fourth. Five times the same thing to the fourth. Remember, you leave the inside function the same. Five times this same thing to the fourth. Then at the end, when we're all done, we multiply by the derivative of what's inside. Then we derive this. We don't derive the inside function till the end. And that we multiply by the derivative of the outside function. So notice, when you derive this same, this same inside function showed up again in the derivative. And its derivative also showed up on the outside, multiplied through at the end. And this is it. We're going to leave this. We can't simplify it anymore. You never want to multiply through or distribute through when you have derivatives. You want to leave it as factored as possible. We have our cosine, our trig function. This works for any trig function. Right now we're going to use a cosine function. Y equals cosine of something. First thing you do is derive cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we're going to have negative sine of something, of exactly what that was. Negative sine of 3x squared. Now we're done deriving the cosine function, so now at the end, we multiply by the derivative of what's inside. Now the derivative comes in, that's 6x. Notice the angle in the cosine function and the angle in the derivative of the cosine function are exactly the same. When we derive trig functions, we never change the angle. You multiply by the derivative of the angle at the end, but the angle is always identical all the way through. You want to simplify this a little bit by bringing the 6x out front with a negative sign, and you can simplify by having negative 6x sine of 3x squared. And that's your derivative of a cosine of some other function. Now we have a radical function, cube root of tan of x. It helps when using radical functions to write it as parentheses to a radical power so you can see the power rule. So we have tan of x to the one third power. Again, our main function is the power function, something to the one third. So you're going to have one third times that something to the negative two thirds, one third minus one. One third is that something, negative two thirds. Then we're done. Now we multiply by the derivative of what's inside. So the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared of x. Now we want to simplify this a little bit. I have a one-third. I have a tan to a negative exponent, so I can throw that in the denominator. And I have a secant squared to a positive exponent, so I'm going to leave that numerator. One on the top, secant squared on the top. So my final derivative has a secant squared on the top. Three on the bottom. Tan to the negative two-thirds is like one over tan to the two-thirds. So the cube root of tan squared of x in our denominator. And there you go, our simple, our simplified derivative of the cube root of tan of x. We're not going to derive these functions, but I'm going to show you some examples of functions that get pretty complicated. The main idea, when you're going through all this, your algebra, your simplification, you're going to distribute, you're going to factor, you're going to combine like terms, you're going to cancel things out. There's going to be a lot of algebra involved. But the main idea still remains the same, just like with the product and the quotient rule. It's, it's still just, the derivative is still just the slope of the tangent line. As the functions get more complicated, more complex, it becomes more involved to find the derivative but you're still finding the same thing. You can't lose sight of that. My answer in the end gives me the slope of the tangent line at a point. That's all it gives you. We're just finding all these advanced methods for finding slopes of tangent lines of more complicated or more complex functions. The product rule and the quotient rule are still going to be applied. We're just going to have to involve the chain rule with those. Product rule with the chain rule involved. So I have two, pro or, uh, two factors multiply together. I can't distribute through or anything like that to make this simpler, so I have to use the product rule. First, 2x plus 7 cubed times derivative of the second. Well, I have a root function with something inside, so you're going to have to use the chain rule. So this times this, but when you derive the, the derivative of this, when you derive this, you have to use the chain rule. Plus, second times derivative of the first, and again, you're going to have to use the chain rule here. So you're going to have a bunch of things multiply through, then there's going to be some simplification, and you'll get plenty of practice that in class and on your homework assignments. But realize that sometimes when you have a product rule, you're also going to have a chain rule involved there. Most of the math isn't as simple as one rule at a time. 
a lot of things get involved. Here we have a function where it's a numerator over the denominator, so it's a quotient rule. Low d high. When you take the derivative of the top function, it's going to need a chain rule application to find this derivative. 2 times this to the first times the derivative of what's inside. Minus high d low. Well, you're going to need to use a chain rule here, the derivative of the low. All over low squared. Quotient rule still applies, but as you're taking those two derivatives, you may have to use a chain rule application. Finally, another chain rule application, quotient to a power. This one's going to get a little bit ugly when you're simplifying it, but again, it's the same idea. I have my main function, something to the ninth power. Nine times this to the eighth times the derivative of what's inside. But the derivative of what's inside is going to be a quotient rule. Low d high minus high d low over the square of low. So this is going to be a pretty complicated one. It's going to be pretty messy. But it's still the same thing. You're still just finding the slope of the tangent line. Last is going to be a trig function where you have to find or use the chain rule twice. Double application of the chain rule. Y equals cosine of the fifth of 12x. It helps when finding derivatives of trig functions like this to write it as a whole thing to the fifth instead of the notation in here. When you're deriving these, it helps throw that outside so you see your power rule. Five times the whole thing to the fourth power times the derivative of what's inside. Well, the derivative of what's inside, you got cosine of 12x, so negative sine of 12x. Plus, now when you derive this, you also have to apply the chain rule again. So multiply by the derivative of the angle, where you get a 12 again. Then you simplify it. 5, negative sine, and 12. Negative 60 out front. Cosine of 12x to the fourth. Sine of 12x. And to clear up these parentheses, bring your 4 inside here. Negative 60. Cosine of the fourth, just the regular trig notation. 12x times sine of 12x. And that's your derivative. Obviously here it's very important. Notice 12x, 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 12x. The angle never changes. A very common error is to change that angle. Throw the derivative of the angle in there instead of the angle itself. You can't change the angle when deriving a trig function.